first quarter of 2020, COVID-19 spurred the fastest market sell-off in history, outpacing declines seen all the way back during the Great Depression. The S&P 500 lost around 35% of its value from peak to trough over the course of just a month, landing the US index into bear market territory. But the market slump was by no means confined to the United States. Investors in major equity indices around the world, from the FTSE to the DAX, to the Nikkei were all grappling with sharp losses. Meanwhile, the commodities markets were facing issues of their own. Tensions between Russia and Saudi Arabia spurred fears of an all-out price war in the oil market, which led to an oil market crash, uh, the worst we've seen since the start of the 90s. Well, we were still in the office when the markets went into panic mode this time last year. I remember being inundated by calls from the media looking for market commentary. This was one of those unusual days where finance news was actually making headlines in the mainstream media. Everyone was talking about the markets. And my personal experience was a mixture of being extremely busy trying to keep up with exactly what was going on, but also trying to figure out what this meant in terms of us. Were we going to continue working in the office or were we going to be sent home? I actually remember packing up my stuff and going home and I only took my laptop and a couple of pens because I thought we'd be back in a couple of weeks. The markets are in better shape than they were before the pandemic. And this is what's surprising and this is what's totally shocking. And this is what's got everybody confused. But what we didn't really fully grasp at the beginning of this recovery was the resilience of the consumer. And we also didn't grasp the adaptability uh, of business, particularly around the tech sector. Um, tech sector became so widely embraced simply because people had to work at home. And there was a greater understanding that tech is going to be more of an intricate part uh, in our lifestyles as we go forward. I think what we expected to happen over a decade really got condensed in about six months. What I'm referring to is the use of internet technology, shopping online, uh, you know, working from home, video conferencing, all these different uh, you know, things that we were doing to a small degree in the past have been widely embraced. I think the prospects for the economy are good. I think, you know, the, the money has been advanced, the Chancellor has spent, I don't think he had any option. I think we're looking in a fairly healthy state, but there are a sort of few question marks, few things that have got to be looked over carefully so that any recovery that would begin to experience after the pandemic is not going to be choked off because the indication are that the tax rises, you know, corporation tax, we are going to stay with those. That isn't going to be a, a sort of one-off thing, which is then going to be reversed. Because even at the higher rate, you know, we still have low tax rates uh, compared to other major economies, such as those in the G7.